Hi everyone. So I know you are very keen to exploit this vulnerability and start leaking kernel addresses to userland, then get an arbitrary read-write primitive, and finally popping a shell. So I'm sure you're going to ask me, why are we going to focus first on actually returning from the learner function cleanly? Don't worry, I'm going to explain that. And so in this video, we're going to look into how to return cleanly to userland without crashing, so we can actually exploit the vulnerability very easily in the next few videos. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so we have solved many problems already. So we have these trap enhancements that allow us to avoid a kernel crash, so that's cool. We can detect from userland that we won the race by checking for a flag change in our fake userland key enlistment, which is cool too. We can, in theory, inject some enlistments into this linked list at any time we want to do things to abuse the bug. But now we have another problem to solve, which is that eventually we're going to want to break out of this loop and ideally return from the kernel so that everything is re relatively stable. And this is useful for multiple reasons. One of which is when you're doing exploit development in general, and you're not sure how the exploit primitives are going to work, and you don't know whether or not you can patch memory, and you want to just be testing, triggering the vulnerability faster and faster by winning the race and testing your ideas. Ideally, you want to win the race, test your exploitation ideas, and then not have to reboot your VM or restore from a snapshot, because then you have to reattach the debugger and so on, reset your breakpoints. So even though you you don't have code execution, having clean recovery is ideal if possible. And just in general, keeping this type of technique in mind of how to cleanly escape the kernel is useful anytime you're doing a kernel exploit for stability or whatever. So it's good to have in mind from the get-go. And so basically in the vulnerable function, we can see three ways for escaping the loop. The first one is effectively the p enlistment shifted, which is now pointing into userland, would need to point to the k resource manager's enlistment head address, since this is what is tested at the beginning of this loop. The problem is we don't know this enlistment head because it's a kernel address. The second method for escaping the loop is the resource manager could go offline, at which point the loop would be escaped. But in order for the key resource manager to go offline, I want to say it's not possible to switch that state because of the enlistments that are still associated with it. But I'm not actually entirely sure, and I actually don't remember if we tried that, but because we had another way, we didn't bother. The third method for escaping the loop would be to get code execution somehow and just execute a shellcode and have that shellcode jump at the end of the rumble function. But this requires bypassing mitigations such as kernel CFG or finding a way to control the instruction pointer, which to be honest, is not the easiest. One thing to note is that we can't wait for all of the other enlistments that were all originally part of the linked list to get parsed, even though we know that the end of that list will necessarily point to the K resource manager enlistment head in the kernel. And the reason is because we are not longer in that kernel list. We are in just in userland and the kernel is parsing our userland data. And so I mentioned there are potentially three methods to escape the loop. And among the three methods, I want to say the easiest one is definitely finding an information leak that allows us to leak the K resource manager address, because then we can deduce the enlistment head address since it's just an offset from the beginning of the K resource manager. And if we are able to leak that address, we can just set the next same RM fling pointer of our userland key enlistment to that specific address, and it will just exit the loop. Another reason for choosing the info leak method to escape the loop is that generally to exploit a kernel vulnerability like this, you want to build an arbitrary read-write primitive, and to do so, you are going to need an info leak in the first place anyway. So it's basically killing two birds with one stone. And another reason for using the info leak method to escape the loop is that we know the kernel already touches our fake userland key enlistments. And so potentially, 
we can leak other stuff if we find good code path for the matter. This diagram shows all the fake user land enlistments that we can build so far. And so the new enlistments we introduce in the final step is the escape enlistment. Basically, the idea would be that in step one, we have the spray enlistment that is used to replace the free k enlistment chunk. And this enlistment is also named use after free enlistment in this diagram. In step two, there is a trap enlistment that initially points to itself so we can detect the race condition from user land. In step three, we introduce primitive enlistments to elevate our privileges and they are yet to be found. And in the last step, we can inject some new user land fake enlistment that we call escape enlistment, which has its next same RM flame pointer set to the K resource manager enlistment head in order to escape the loop and return to user land. And so basically you only do that after you've completely escalated privileges or got kernel code execution or whatever. And this is because all the primitives we can trigger are possible because we have some control from crafting fake user land enlistments. And there is this kernel thread which executes in this loop and is parsing our fake user land enlistments. And so as soon as we make this kernel thread exit this loop by using an escape enlistment, it will go back to user land and we basically lose all control. And so we need to escalate our privileges before we exit the loop. And so to do so, we basically need an information leak.